and happy Wednesday, everyone. This is another brand new episode of Best Kept Secrets, the podcast where you can anonymously get that secret that's been weighing on you off your chest. Personally, I love hearing from all of you guys so much. And I always say that there is no topic that is off limits. And it's honestly super true. I mean, I never know what to expect when I read through your secrets. And lately, I've been receiving an unusual amount about hair. So that's what we're going to talk about today. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, I used to cry when I would get like a haircut because I wanted my hair to be super, super long. But you know, the, I have like split ends and I had to cut it for it to like grow healthier. But I would be so sad. And then I would go home and be like, oh, I got my hair. Everybody, I feel like has gone through that age or like that stage that you want your hair to be like Rapunzel, super long, but you can't have it. Now, I really don't care. Sometimes I even change my hair color. I, sh- I shorten it. Sometimes it's longer. So I, I really don't care right now. But something I do know is that when I have a bad hair day, I can really like it can really change my mood. And I, I don't know when it's especially when it's greasy and I don't want to touch it. I, I hate that. It's just like the whole day I'm de- touching it and checking it. So for today's call, both my callers today believe that hair may actually have supernatural powers. This is completely the opposite. I've always loved playing around with different types of hairstyles and I love wearing wigs. And I think one of my favorite looks was when I wear the the purple wig, the one that I did for Halloween, Buzz Lightyear wig. And I mean, we, we actually made that ourselves from scratch, me and my, my hairstylist. And, you know, we all know that a bad hair day can really ruin your mood. I know that. But both my callers today believe that hair may actually have supernatural powers. The following content contains adult subject matter, including sensitive material, and is intended for adult consumption only. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Therefore, discretion is advised. Lele Pons is not a trained expert, but is using her personal experiences and platform to create a space for sensitive discussions. One of the callers, Teddy, who I'm going to be talking to later, has a sinister reason for scavenging hair. But before we get to him, let's talk to Lori, who believes her unusual collection may just be her very own good lucky charm. So let's find out why. Hi, Lori. How are you? I'm great. How are you, Lily? So we're dying to know, what is your best kept secret? Oh, my gosh. Uh, My husband has only known about this for the past 20 years. It started out as a joke. We had, at one time, five cats. Um, We're down to two, you know, due to age. And every time I clean, you know, they shed their cat whiskers. Well, the joke was, if you find a cat whisker, they're good luck, so you keep them. Well, 20 years later, I've got a lot of cat whiskers <laughs> how many i haven't bothered to count them there's it, it looks like oh my god i'm gonna need professional counters for this because like a hundred i'd say way more than that i think let me see if i estimate let's see over 20 years maybe one a week i think there's at least oh god at least 500 in there oh wow it doesn't look I'm like much when i got them all together it didn't look like a lot but when i looked at them and tried to separate them i went <laughs> nope <laughs> there are a lot wow but wait so you do this because uh good luck yeah it's a superstition we were just being silly and i said yeah you see it can't pick up a cat whisker it's good luck i threw it in the well of all things a cookie jar shaped like a cat and yeah. uh, i've been doing this since 99 so over 20 years that's insane <laughs> Here we are. Listen, you're not the first person that has superstitions. Like my grandma can't have 13 people in a table because it's that luck <laughs> yeah. for her. I don't know why. Sometimes we try to like, we try to like put 13 people right. like me and my cousins for oh. like to fuck with her a little yeah. bit. But she like notices. <laughs> She's like, nope. And she doesn't even like, because she can control it because she can either sit down or not. Right, right. Because she'd be the 13th one. Yeah. Whereas that's my lucky day. I've found, I've literally found cash on Friday the 13th when I was broke. I've gotten jobs. I've got calls and said, hey, you got the job on Friday the 13th. I think I met my uh, second husband on Friday the 13th. <laughs> so it doesn't, so it's so 13 doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. I, know, I made it, I made it into a lucky number for me instead of, it was just like I said, it was a joke and we were being silly. And then next thing I know, I've got 20 years of cat whiskers. <laughs> we'll start with just one cat. And then we rescued a kitty who was pregnant and we ended oh. up keeping three of the babies because we couldn't find homes for uh, just, we found homes for just two. So you and love cats. I, I do love cats and I've got three Pomeranians as well, but we have two of the, well, I call the babies. They're 15 years old. 
<laughs> yeah, were, that's not a baby. Yeah, I was their midwife. So it, to me, it's like, oh, like your kids. I have kids too. So it's like, oh, you're still my baby. And they go, um, they go, course, round, yeah. you know? <laughs> leave me alone. I want to know, what are you planning on doing with these whiskers? Are you going to go to your, to your kids? And you know, the funniest thing is that the fairgrounds, they have this, uh, in, you know, the, they have an area for hobbies. And they have a prize for the weirdest collection. And I've always joked, and I probably will do it once we're able to actually go places again after COVID. I'm going to get plasticine clay and make a head. I'm an artist, too. So I can make the cat head just to make a goofy cat head and stick the whiskers in it and enter it as the weirdest collection ever. It is the weirdest. I have some weird collections. I think the whiskers ones beats everything. I mean, you have other collections. Like, what are other ones? I collect spaceships and I collect beads because I do, I, I'm an artist and I do bead work. But I've collected beads since I was 11 years old. I uh, collect uh, rocks every time we go somewhere. And my granddaughter and I would go somewhere. We'd, take, we'd bring a rock. I'd say, you have to look for the really weird rocks. So in our backyard, we've got a, a lot of people collect rocks. I feel like right, yeah, rocks are normal. Uh, whiskers are yeah. a little, a little odd. <laughs> Does anybody know about this collection? Like, obviously, your husband. Yeah, my husband, and I think one of my uh, my kids do, but they never really, you know, looked at it. And oh, mom, you're just being weird. <laughs> That's my mom. One. If my mom did that, I'd be like, "Hey, do you want to talk about it?" Yeah, you want to talk about it? I will. I, I had a roommate once in my younger days, and uh, I kept my kids' baby teeth, and I also kept my dog's baby. My tees. mom did that too. Yeah, moms do that, and I, I have locks of their hair. Well, I had it in this box, a really cute little tin box, and my weird roommate looked at my stuff, and she she's like, "You got to move." I go, "Why?" She goes, "Because you're a witch." <laughs> A witch? A what? That's so funny. <laughs> I was like what? I, what? I put a spell on you. <laughs> and now you're yeah, now you're mine. No, no, no I understand. And I wonder, are, are cats whiskers the only whiskers that are good luck? I don't know. You know, I haven't bothered to it was such an old superstition I from my great grandma. And I just remember as a kid. She must be very proud. Well, yeah, she's looking down on me going, Oh, she's just as weird as I am. <laughs> And and have you noticed any more good luck since you started collecting the whiskers? Obviously, it's twenty years. Well, I you know, think so. I'd won the lottery by now, but not really more than usual. Uh, <laughs> you know, ups and downs. Not quite like twenty twenty, but you know. How, how do the whiskers make you feel when you look at them? Are you proud? Uh, proud. Let's see. Like it definitely enforces my sense of cool weirdness because I've strived never to be boring. From the time I moved out here from Missouri and I said, I'm never going to be boring. Well, I'm definitely not boring. And the listeners prove it. My last question is, <laughs> is uh, any other strange, unique things you've heard bring people good luck? Oh, gosh. Well, yeah, you find a penny with the head up. You got to find a penny with the head up, not tails up. If it's tails up, you leave it on the ground. If it's heads up, you pick it up. What I, and then what I changed it to was you pick it up with the bottoms up, the tails, and then I place it with the head up so someone else can have the good luck. <laughs> oh thank you i'm so thank weird I, I love it no I, it's fine i love it you're so nice you're not a witch <laughs> no no i'm not I, i'm the good witch <laughs> you're the good witch yeah i'm glinda the good witch i love that yeah <laughs> well thank you so much for sharing this honestly like you learn something new every day, and now that I, if I see a whisker, I will definitely collect one. Yeah, there you go. I think the original superstition is you make a wish on it and then blow it out of your hand. If I remember correctly, you should blow all of them. <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah, maybe that's why I haven't had I won the lottery. Maybe I should blow them all one at a time, and there I have a million bucks. Thank you for coming in and sharing your secret. You're very welcome, Lele. Have a good one. You know, I have a lot of superstitious too. Like, I am very superstitious when it comes to like, if I see a black cat like crossing the street, I freak out because I think my mom put that in my head as well. I don't care about the number thirteen. I don't. I didn't know about the whiskers thing, but I don't know if it has to be. It has to do something with my mom because my mom is very superstitious and uh, like, oh, my mom freaks out if like she says that it's like seven years of bad luck if if um if the mirror uh breaks and I believe that and but I've broken it so many times i have to have like the worst luck right now but i love her and i love her attitude and she's like always la she was like laughing i don't know if you guys heard her but when she was laughing she really was laughing like she loves she, love she loves her life and um i'm happy her whiskers make you happy and you know uh it is a really weird collection but uh 
But you know what? If that's what makes her happy, whatever, bro. No judging in this podcast. All right, guys, I'm going to take a quick break, but I'll be back with another hair raising secret. So don't go anywhere. All right, da, 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 special alert, guys, for you guys who are listening right now. My new song, Bubblegum, featuring Yandel, is out now. I mean, as in today, out now. Today. Please enjoy today's show and then head over to my Spotify music page to take a listen to my new song, Bubblegum. And we're going to be talking right now to Teddy, which I'm going to tell you right now is by far one of the weirdest calls you're ever going to hear here in Best Kept Secrets. Let's go. Teddy, you're on the line. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. I'm dying to know what is your best kept secret. Okay. So a couple years ago, I was with my friend Lindsay in New Orleans, and she got me kind of hooked on some voodoo stuff, some witchcraft. Got really into it, and I kind of started to get, start to feel like I could get it going, get it working. I um, I had this friend who I thought was kind of an asshole, and I and I wanted to try it on her, and I got some clippings of her hair. How? I started carrying around like a mustache trimmer. Oh. Because it's really small, and I would, you know, get in there, you know. So I, with yeah, her, yeah, yeah. for example, I had her over for lunch, and she had no idea what was happening. But I attached it to the voodoo doll. I worked on it for a while, and, I, and my, it was, this was my first time really trying it. And I just wanted to see, I don't know, imagined I could get her to trip. So I attached her, you know, I poked needles in her ankle, poked needles, needles in her ankle, and then... A few days later, she tripped really bad, but she broke her ankle, and I felt horrible. Whoa! So I started thinking, I, this is working. So then I had another friend. This is where it really just got bad for me, really. Because I started to feel like it got way, you know, it started to, like, spread a little bit. I had a friend who was kind of a, maybe a womanizer, kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just didn't like his style. <laughs> he he slept over I in my bunk bed, and... I got clippings of his hair again, once again, and then we have pictures together. I put, I really wanted to get focused on this one. I put a clipping of his face on his voodoo doll, oh, and wow. I poked the voodoo doll's wiener over please and over tell and over. Me, wait, what? Ha- please tell me what happened. Okay, he ended up boning a bunch of girls and giving all of them herpes. And oh I, of course, didn't hear about it from him. I heard about it from one of our mutual girlfriends. So I was I was just thinking, like, oh, my God, did I do this? Do you think you gave him herpes? I mean, I don't know if I gave him herpes, but I maybe. I mean, I poked him in the wiener and the voodoo doll. Wow. What do you need to make a voodoo doll? And did anybody teach you this? Because I feel like this is like a gift. Well, my friend, when I was in New Orleans on, on, a, on vacation, she I was down there for a couple of weeks. And she really turned me on to it. She would just gather a bunch of belongings, a bunch of things from, you know, dirt, you know, like their their clothes, whatever you can get. A uh, hair, I think, works the best. But, um, yeah, my friend uh, who did this, I mean, he stayed at my house for quite a while. So it was kind of easy uh, in, in that case. But I think I was just really close. And I think that maybe having that picture helped me visualize yeah. and it helped me kind of channel something. I don't know. I mean, I have a friend from the islands of Dominica and they, there's a bunch of voodoo and witchcraft on the island. And so uh, I, I think it's That's definitely real. Weird. There's a chance I could have given a bunch of people herpes to a voodoo doll. So basically don't mess with you. That's what it is. <laughs> like, wow. Did you, did you try talking to the girl, the, the first girl about how you felt first or you just, you were like, this case is lost. I just wanted to see if it would work, work yeah. really. And when I found out, I, I had, that was the first time I really wondered if it would work. So then I had to try it again. So basically, if somebody pisses you off, that's when they, they become a voodoo doll. Well, that's the thing is it kind of became like a wild obsession for people who pissed me off. I just 
I just got really into it. Don't we all wish we could do that, though? You know what I mean? Like, to be honest, I wish sometimes I think of like, oh, my God, I wish this person could just fall. I mean, that sounds horrible. But, you know, thoughts are (laughs) thoughts. We can't, you know, thoughts are thoughts. I mean, I would never I I, I would never just like push her or whatever or push a person or whoever, a guy or girl. But sometimes I'm just like, oh, my God, shut up. Just, you know, and like or I don't know. I feel like. Oh, you have a superpower. You here, you know. <laughs> I have a lot of rage that I'm channeling through a uh, voodoo doll, and maybe it's starting to work. So, do you, do you worry about like dark forces like turning on you? You know, kind of, because I didn't expect a lot of bad things to happen like that bad, like breaking an ankle. Yeah. Um, so maybe there's bad karma. Who knows? How many voodoo dolls have you made? I, so far, I've made three. Oh wow! So the girl, then the other, the guy, and then who else? The other one never really worked. The which was my first one. I actually tried to do something with my brother. Which what? Maybe that's why it didn't work. What do you think? Are you are you think you're gonna stop? Or are you gonna be? You know, are you gonna keep on exploring the magic? Well, I think that I'm at least gonna have to uh, keep it in the back. Of, of of my closet, you know. Maybe this is a good time to bring it out with, uh, you know, all the madness in the world. Maybe there's somebody else who, who might piss me off. I mean, I, I feel like it's it's very invigorating to think that maybe there's a connection there between these things that are happening. So, yeah, I, I, I probably will always do this a little bit. Wow. And my parents are hyper, hyper religious, so they probably would kill me if they found out that I was doing anything like this so you haven't told anybody what do you think they're going to say if they find out i just wouldn't tell anybody that i associate with on a daily basis because they probably think i was a lunatic yeah probably you know yeah (laughs) probably i mean there's no judging here i just hope that you you know that you take care of this gift and you don't go too far with it you know please yeah (laughs) no killing no killing ever no yeah, no, uh, of course, of course. Just fun and games. You know, maybe maybe you should think about talking about your feelings, you know, more. That might, yeah. Instead of just <laughs> doing witchcraft. Thank you so much for sharing this. And if another, you know, another weird thing happens with the voodoo dolls, just come back and tell us, please. I will, absolutely. Thank you for letting me share. And it's funny because you can't even get in trouble for that. Because, like, you didn't do them. You, and and plus police officers are not going to be like, oh, because you did voodoo, it happened. Yeah. So That's you're safe. That's so true. Yeah. So you're good. But just be careful. <laughs> okay. Bye. Holy shit. I really hope that guy liked me because I was trying to be so nice because I don't want anything to happen to me after what he said. My gosh, that's scary. You know, um, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say because I'm <laughs> scared right now. But, you know, he should talk about his feelings. I feel like he has a lot of feelings, you know, bottled up. And that's why he turns to voodoo to do all that stuff. I can't believe it works. You know what I mean? Like maybe one more time. If one more thing happens that is has to do with like, you know, how he treated the doll, then that's when I freak out, you know. But two things that happen exactly how he did. That's that is fucked up. I'm sorry. I I was trying to keep us like a happy face this whole time, but I was like, wait a minute, but this is going somewhere else. This is not a joke. What really surprised me was that you know I believe in like you know there's dark forces and in good forces and exorcisms and all that, but it was hard to believe the fact that he did it so easily. You know that it, no practice, nobody taught him. He just did it. Well, kind of someone taught it, but like that he a normal guy could just do it. It's not that like you know that for me was the like how did you just Anybody can do it? That's crazy. That's very dangerous. I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm ever going to look at hair or any type of hair the same ever again. There's so many things you can do with hair. I don't know what it symbolizes, but the idea that hair can be used to bring someone good luck is totally new to me or to actually destroy someone. I mean, that is creepy. I've never heard of Lori's superstition, but I do think other items are good luck charms. Like, you know, like the ones that you have to break the bone. Another one that I know is the four leaf clover. And I do believe in that one because I never found one. Only one time my cousin found one. And that's very rare. And I've heard that a rabbit's foot brings you good luck. Uh, I don't know about that one. I wouldn't get that one, but I heard it does. And with that being said, I don't think I'm ever gonna, you know, start a cat whisker collection anytime soon. 
Because I mean, for one thing, I don't have a cat. And secondly, the idea of finding a cat whisker on the floor sounds like finding a needle in a haystack. So Lori's dedication to her very unusual collection is admirable. And it doesn't sound like it was taking over her life. So that's a good thing. I think that if I had that belief that collecting cat whiskers would be bringing me good luck, I would probably take it too far as well. And especially someone like that has OCD like me, that I would definitely be triggered and it would, it would be a little bit hard for me to leave the house before I find the perfect whisker. Now, guys, Teddy's call had a lot of things to unpack. I mean, I mentioned it in one of our calls a few weeks ago that I do believe in good and bad spirits or forces, but I, I just don't know. Like, is making a voodoo doll and putting a hex on someone as easy as Teddy described? I mean, that is just weird that it was so easy for him. Now, another thing is, like, based on the tone of voice that he had, it was, like, as if he had fun with it, you know? I hope it's not his fault, but thinking is your fault and being happy about it? I don't don't know. Um, I don't want to talk too much shit because I don't know if I don't want him to do a voodoo doll on me. And I don't think he's lying about everything, you know? I don't think he's lying at all, in fact. But could those two cases literally just be a strange coincidence? Yes, he put a pin in one of the doll's legs and then the person fell down. He stuck a pin in the doll's penis and then said that he found out that the guy had herpes. Unfortunately, it spread to other women, but the other woman didn't deserve it. So that's a little bit weird. Teddy said that he slept with a lot of people and that he deserved it. But, you know, you're not the one that has to determine if someone deserves something or not. It just happens because it happens. But don't be responsible for that. You're eventually going to feel guilty. So I really want to believe that if there were magical forces at play here, that the bad thing would have happened to the intended target only. And, you know, the idea that his voodoo hex also affected the innocent woman didn't sit right with me. Whether or not the voodoo doll hexes really worked or not, I hope that in the future Teddy works on being more open and can talk to the people about his feelings when he gets hurt. It's also all fun and games until someone gives you an STD. That is not something to fuck around with. But before I wrap up today, I just want to thank you all for listening. And I have one question, which is the question of the week. And that is, are you superstitious? Do you believe in voodoo dolls and good luck charms? Do you believe in one but not the other? Let me know where you stand. As always, head to my Instagram at Lillipons to vote on the poll. I'll see you next week, my friends. Stay safe, stay positive, and wash your hair. Bye. If you or someone you know are struggling emotionally, text START to 741-741 for a confidential chat anytime. Bum, bum. Thanks for listening to Best Kept Secrets with me, Lele Pons, only on Spotify in partnerships with Shot Studios. The Shot Studios original team includes creators John Shahidi and Sam Shahidi, my lovely producer Belinda Mercer, and audio editor Stephen Colon. From Spotify Studios executive producers Javier Pinot, Liz Gailey, Gina Delvac, and Danny Trebodge. And a special thanks to Dan Behar, Jessica Molina, Francisco Quijada, and Julio Pabon. I'm Lele. Follow me on Instagram at Lele Pons and check out my exclusive merch at lilshop.com. That is lilshop, L-I-L, shop.com. Talk to you next week. <laughs>